This series is about watching Casey Neistat's 800 vlogs. We'll be looking at Casey's film, cinematography, editing techniques that he uses. So around 24 seconds into the first video, we get an explanation about why Casey wants to do vlogging. I'm starting a proper daily vlog. I'm psyched. So this is the first vlog entry. Uh, but let me start this morning back in New York City. So it's 2015. Up until now, Casey's been very successful with advertising and YouTube videos. I got married like a year ago, uh, had a kid three months ago. My other kid, Owen, he's driving now. He injects past footage into his explanation um, in order to give it more texture. It's kind of funny to watch this episode because it seems like he's setting up his rubric for later episodes. Rubric, rubric, why is that word so hard to say? His video ends on a shock, literally a shock from a bug zapper onto his hand from Candace. In episode two, he's experimenting with establishing shots. I'm not really uh, your film expert. I do like film and I watch a lot of it. I just, just a second. I Okay, so I'm looking at this and I'm looking at this. I didn't think it was gonna be that hard. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this. And I know this is cringe, especially in these videos, but the alternative is pit vipers. And I'm not sure I want that to be my identity. I guess I'm just gonna be using somebody else's technique. This is the first one, I guess. Casey's a master of these stop and shoot technique. He will put his camera somewhere, he'll run away from it. He'll run back into frame, past the camera sometimes, most of the time. He will pick up his camera and he'll go somewhere else and do the same thing over and over again. It makes it pretty cool. It makes it seem like you have a whole film crew and you don't really have a whole film crew. You just kind of have yourself and your ingenuity. For example, my camera over there, it's not really sitting over there. It's right here with you and me, but it seems like I came into this room and my camera was already set up. So these St. Barth's episodes, there's not much in the way of cinematography. Um, it, it's, it's just feeling out a story. and You know, you can't blame him for that. He just started. He does have his best storytelling skills on display in these. This is the first day after I announce I'm going to make a movie every day and my laptop stops working. In one of the St. Barth's episodes, he does uh, something that's really interesting. He has enemy and drama. He brings the enemy in, which is definitely the laptop. He broke his laptop. Then there's something called a backpack. And I'm on an island where you definitely can't buy a new laptop. Look, okay, so you think this place is gonna have what I need? They're open. Uh, let's go find out. They're not open? What kind of hours are these? It's created something so that the viewer uh, cares a little bit more about these characters. And even though they didn't ask for it, even though they don't really care, it's now something that they might root for. It's something that they might actually care about later on, especially during the resolution. The backpack, which is very short, is that they cannot find a shop that's open. And for, you know, total context, this is St. Barth's, it's an island. How could they have more than one laptop store? I just, I don't understand how he would find a MacBook just randomly on the beach. I, but he did. He found it. All right. It works. The thing... So there's this ridiculous cut at 6 minutes and 40 seconds. He makes it feel seamless, and it doesn't seem like much, but he takes the audio from the very end of one of the clips and he just kind of overlaps it into the next one. A lot of talking head videos do that, but this one is more about transitioning from one place to another, which is really hard. It's quite often jarring for, um, for somebody, especially if it's not just scene. It's, it has to be the end of the scene to do all hard cut, you 
know, the, you come to the conclusion of whatever these people are talking about, and then hard cut to the next scene. Instead of it being like a movie where you have a, the items that are happening here, two characters, they end talking, hard cut, next scene, and then, it, you know, you go from there. What he's doing is he's showing you that the day is fluid, and it's all his scene. The entire video is his scene. So he has the audio carry over just slightly into the next clip, and it helps ease into that clip. So yeah, there's a coffee making scene and he goes step, 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 step through it and then, you know, he's got it. There's also something about his close-ins. He, he's really a master of this, like cropping in on everything and getting really, really close up, almost embarrassingly so. Now, the rest of the episodes that I wanted to cover are four, five, and six. I'll cover six in the next episode, just starting there. For episode four, um, he just talks about a learning curve. He talks about how, how everything has a learning curve and how specifically this does. I'm pretty sure he uses his glasses as an ND filter like this. Maybe if I had manual focus turned on, like kind of like, kind of like this. Otherwise you have to have one of these little guys. It's an ND filter. You spin the dial and it makes all of the overexposed items underexposed. This is mainly for outside. So if you have really blown out stuff or you're just learning and you don't really want to bother. Right. Anyway. So that's it. That's the first episode. And hopefully I'll just keep this going. Uh, next episode will start at number six.